perfect. Um, so yeah, welcome everybody to what's now the sixth European NILM workshop. Um, I just want to start with a massive thank you, uh, not just to our sponsors that you see at the bottom, but also uh, my co-organizers from Net2Grid and uh, Verve. So let's just have a quick round of applause for them. Okay, so why are we here? Uh, we're here to talk about non-intrusive load monitoring or energy disaggregation. These are basically synonyms, they, they mean the same thing, and they refer to the problem of taking the energy consumption of a building, such as a household or a commercial property, and breaking it down into individual appliances or loads. Um, so this is the problem that I think most people in the room are familiar with and what we're gonna be talking about for the next two days. Um, most of the time when we talk about uh, NIL or energy disaggregation, we talk about electricity, but it does apply um, similarly to water or gas, but probably the, the majority of the material that you'll hear over the next few days will, will be mostly focused towards electricity. Um, and when we talk about uh, electricity data, at least in this example, I think the data rate is something like a sample every like one second or 10 seconds, but it really varies from maybe the, the data you might get from a smart meter, it might be half hourly data or daily data, um, and then up to the other end of the spectrum where we have uh, kilohertz or even megahertz um, data. So obviously, like with different data rates, there are kind of different things that are possible from, from, um, from these data sources, but really we're, we're interested in the whole spectrum here at, at this conference. Um, so just to give you a bit of context about um, where this conference falls kind of relative to other conferences that, that happen in, in this field. Um, so uh, on the left here, you can see the International Neon Workshop in blue. And this uh, workshop has more of an academic focus to it. It's held every two years and it has uh, kind of a formal peer review process. So people submit papers, they're peer reviewed by a program committee, and then the accepted papers are, are presented. So it's, it's great in that respect in that you get uh, high quality papers coming out of, of, of the conference. But I think this conference has sort of less of an industry focused. And then at the other end of the spectrum, on the right hand side, you can see the EPRI NILM workshop. So this, this has almost an entirely uh, industry focus. And, and again, it's been held uh, not quite every other year, it's been held uh, sort of twice before um, in the US and then, and then once joined in London. Um, and as I say, this has more of, a, more of an industry focus. But where we are here today at the European Young Workshop, I think is strikes a nice balance between the two. We have both a good participation from academia and, and in industry. And I think sort of walking that line is, is a really, really healthy relationship, really healthy balance. Um, so you can see that we've held this workshop every year since 2014. It was in London four times, but Actually, since last year, um, we started to move the conference around. For me, at least, it's convenient to organize a, a conference in, in my home city. But also, I think it's really healthy for conferences to move around. Of course, you lose some people uh, from the, the venue that you're moving away from, but you gain, uh, you gain new participants from the venue that you're moving to. So I think, I think this is really good to give uh, more people an opportunity to attend the conference and also make sure you have a, 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 a balanced agenda. So uh, just to give you a quick overview of what the next two days are going to look like uh, today, um, where we are at the moment is the uh, welcome and introduction at 10.30. Um, and we're going to move straight into the uh, opening keynote. That will be a, a joint keynote from Energy and Net2Grid. So after that keynote, uh, we have um, a lunch break and uh, three, se three sessions this afternoon. The first session will be made up of two talks. So uh, the vast majority of the talks at this conference will be uh, 15 minutes in duration, plus an extra five minutes for questions and, and changeover. Um, so they, they, they mostly fit into to 20 minute slots. So uh, we have a 40 minute uh, session of two talks, um, talking about evaluation and collaboration uh, immediately after lunch, followed by a coffee break, and then uh, two further sessions um, after the coffee break. Um, and both of those sessions are gonna be focused on high frequency uh, energy disaggregation. So we'll be talking about sampling faster than once per second. Um, and again, uh, each of the talks in these sessions are going to be 15 minutes in duration, uh, plus five minutes for, for questions and changeover. Then towards the end of the day, we have possibly like, I think my favorite part of, part of this conference, which will be the lightning talk session. This is always, I, I think, great fun, where we, have, we invite each of our poster presenters or demo presenters or actually anyone else who really wants to uh, come up to the front and give a 60 second overview of what they're working on. And the benefit of, the, of this lightning talk session is that it gives everyone in the room the opportunity to hear about what posters are outside and what demos are available so that uh, 
the presenters, make sure that they get the right audience members to come and talk to them afterwards. Hopefully, this means that you, you don't miss a networking opportunity. Um, immediately following the lightning talks, we'll have the poster and demo session. Again, that will be um, out there in the foyer. Some, I think, of the demos are already set up, and I'm sure the posters will be set up throughout the day. Uh, and uh, we, we have a, a good amount of time for that poster and demo session. Uh, and after that, at 6.30 this evening, we're hopefully going to have a group picture. I don't actually know if we agreed where we're going to have that group picture yet, but maybe we'll, we'll give some more details on that later. Um, and then, uh, finally, the aim is to meet at a uh, social event at uh, the Kitchen Bar. More details from Demetrius on that in a moment. Um, but just like a reminder, so everything at this venue, in terms of the catering stuff, is all paid for. But the um, social events at the Kitchen Bar, I'm afraid you have to pay for yourself. So that's uh, the agenda for um, today. Um, just a, a quick overview of what we have tomorrow. We're starting slightly earlier tomorrow, because hopefully... You're all here now. Uh, we're going to be starting at uh, 9.20 uh, for a session on deep learning. So that's going to be made up of two talks. Again, they'll be uh, 50 minutes long each. We have a mid-morning coffee session and then a, uh, a shorter session from vendors and uh, innovative, innovative applications. So these will be shorter talks. These will actually be um, two five-minute talks, but we have a little more time for, um, for questions and so on. Uh, in the afternoon, we have uh, two, two further sessions separated by coffee break. The first on real-world deployments. I think that's, again, uh, two talks. And then the final session of the conference is on uh, data sets. And actually, may maybe it's a bit broader than data sets. And this is probably the largest session. I think we have five talks squeezed into this final session. Um, then at the end of the conference, uh, the aim is to uh, conclude with a discussion session. Basically, th this is the opportunity to talk about um, what you liked about this conference, what you didn't like, what we could change for next year, whether we should even do this next year, where it should be hosted next year, who should organize it next year, all of these sorts of things. So, so keep these in mind um, as you go through this conference and uh, if you have any suggestions, like, of course you can talk about it throughout, but that's a, that's a great opportunity to just have an open discussion with the rest of the room about where we want to take this conference because ultimately it's, it's ours, we can do whatever we want, whatever we want with it. So yeah, I'm, I'm keen to hear your, hear your opinions. Then the aim is to close the workshop at about 3.30 tomorrow. So hopefully that gives you time to uh, make onward travel if, if you need to tomorrow. Okay, so just a few kind of placeholder slides I've got here. So uh, our aim is to stream uh, the slides and the presenter audio. Uh, that will be streamed online. And also the videos will be available afterwards to watch back. So if you have any friends that have, say, missed the conference and you want to share some of the material with them, uh, in a... I don't know, a week's time or something, the uh, talks will be split up into um, individual videos and uploaded to, to a single YouTube playlist. And all of that information will come out uh, in, in the days following the conference. However, if you are presenting today and you'd prefer that your, uh, your talk wasn't streamed and wasn't available on YouTube afterwards, just uh, speak to me first and we'll make sure it, it doesn't go out live. Uh, in terms of social media, um, there is a Twitter hashtag if you would like to use it, and also a, a Nilm Workshop LinkedIn group if you haven't come across it so far. These are um, yeah, great things to join and it gives a good opportunity for networking uh, kind of outside of these events and uh, getting other people's contact details and so on. But it's also a, a way of hearing about um, developments in the field, right? So rather than waiting for this conference to arrive every year, um, there are kind of more regular posts and, and so on in, in these groups. So I um, have a quick bit of advice to presenters. I've already mentioned the duration of the uh, speaking slots. Um, we have a slightly confusing uh, audio setup in the room. As you can see, we have one microphone in front of me. So this is the lectern mic, which captures the audio for the room and sends it around the speakers in the room. We also have a secondary microphone, which is the one that I, I clipped to my shirt. Um, and this is the one that captures the audio for the stream. So, so don't worry about tapping this one. You won't hear any noise in the room. It's, this one that will make noise in the room, but the idea is that we want both so that we capture the audio for the stream and we capture the and we uh, make sure everyone in the room can, can also hear the audio. Uh, just to kind of uh, make the talks run as smoothly as possible throughout the day, at the end of each session, we'll announce the session chair for the following session. The session chair is just going to introduce the speakers um, and uh, help them set up and things, make sure the session runs the time and so on. Uh, but it would be great if at the end of one session, the speakers and the chair for the following session could come to the front, introduce themselves, just so we can make sure we've got all of the slides and, and they've already met each other. Um, that, that'll, I think, just make the transition a, a little bit a little bit easier. Um, 
So I mentioned the presenter audio. Also, when it comes to asking questions from the audience, you might notice that in the seats in front of you, there are microphones all around the room. And um, please do use these for asking questions. Even if the speaker can hear you, other people in the room might not be able to. So, so the, the microphones in the chair are, are really useful for asking questions. Uh, the way to use them is you pick it up, you press the button, the LED should light up red, you can talk then, and then once you're done, press the button again and the LED should go off. That should hopefully make um, the questions nice and audible to, to the whole room. Um, okay, so one last thing. Uh, we have some uh, sticky labels that were uh, available at the front desk. We also have some more at the front here. Um, this is something that we haven't tried before, but um, yeah, I, I thought we, we discussed it beforehand and thought it might be kind of a, a useful networking opportunity. Uh, the aim is to um, uh, be able to sort of broadcast whether you work for a company that is currently hiring or whether you might be open to hearing about um, uh, possible opportunities. So if you are a company that's hiring, uh, please feel free to grab a, a blue label, a blue um, sticker and attach it to your name badge. Um, and if you are open to hearing about positions, then uh, please grab a green sticker and attach that to your, to your name badge. And hopefully this will encourage and enable some networking opportunities over the next few days. So actually I'm just gonna um, pass around some of the labels now. Bert, are you hiring? <laughs> Okay, um, so I think one last thing I think to, I have to add are feedback forms. So uh, I think we're planning to send out uh, by email um, some feedback surveys tomorrow once most of the workshop is passed. Um, please like, be honest and give, give us your feedback if you don't mind. Um, it's really helpful to get everyone's opinion in, in a way that we can collate the results and, and use them to inform future conferences. Um, so have a think about um, feedback as well over the next few days and um, uh, as I say, uh, try to fill the feedback forms out as soon as possible before, um, before life gets busy and, and, and uh, yeah, other things get in the way. And I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to say. I'm now going to hand over to Dimitrios who's going to talk a bit more about uh, the local organisation. Hi, good morning. I am uh, Dimitrios, working for Net2Grid and uh, co-organizing with Oli, Nikki and Pete uh, this conference. First time here in the Sound Nikki. It's a really big pleasure to have you all here in the Sound Nikki, so welcome. Uh, I will go through some slides uh, with some uh, necessary information for your convenience uh, during your presence here. Uh, first of all, as you saw, we are on the ground floor and uh, in case of an emergency, you can either use uh, that door where Nikki stands and go outside or also this uh, uh, parallel door here behind the, uh, the screen uh, that you can use in order to go out. Ho let's hope that nothing happens. Uh, of course, when you go out, on your right hand, you can see the demo tables from companies uh, like us and Verve. And uh, uh, if you go straight, uh, you will see some uh, labels uh, with uh, toilets and restrooms that uh, are available anytime. Uh, close to the elevator, there are two elevators. Close to them, uh, directly on the left side, there's a room uh, uh, named uh, 001. In case someone has a luggage or big stuff with him or a coat and he needs to put that there, and uh, have it uh, safe, uh, he can use that room. And uh, if that door is locked, he can simply ask uh, some of the people in the registration board in, in the entrance of the building uh, to, for, him to, for them to unlock it. And you can leave your stuff there and you can take it when we leave. Uh, regardless of the time you will leave, up to 6.30 we'll be here, 7 uh, maybe. Today you, there will be people here to unlock it for you and get your stuff. Um, we have a lot of coffee outside and uh, the coffee table will be, as they call it, running. So anytime during the day you would like to have a water, a refreshment or coffee, uh, they will be there for you. Unfortunately, uh, we are not allowed to bring any coffee and food inside this uh, place here because they had some troubles sometimes and they don't like it. Uh, as you can imagine, smoking uh, is not allowed. Uh, Anyone, uh, anywhere here inside uh, the place. But if you go outside, there are also some uh, round uh, high tables we will use also for the catering, for the lunch. Uh, of course, uh, there's plenty of space outside and uh, beautiful weather. So if you want to smoke, maybe that's a good uh, place to, to go. Uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, most of you have already 
uh, gathered the information to, to join the Wi-Fi. Uh, if someone hasn't, uh, Nikki and uh, Lucy in the registration desk uh, outside the, the amphitheater have uh, codes for each one of us. These are the instructions, they are pretty easy. Uh, you simply put uh, the auth uh, web connect and then you use your credentials to join. Uh, the codes will be active for both days and uh, you can simply use them to, to stream. Uh, that's the place we have booked uh, tonight for the social event. As Oliver said, it's called Kitchen Bar. It's uh, maybe half an hour walking from here, but I'm guessing it's quite convenient. Probably most of you will be staying in hotels in the city center, so that's in this direction. It's exactly uh, close to the port. It's nice, and there's out space also for people to have uh, dinner and drinks uh, since the weather is fine. Uh, so we are here on the, on the right corner in the Aristotle University. That's the red building that we are. If you want to walk and get there, it's uh, half an hour, maybe a bit more. Uh, I would suggest for you to go uh, through the seafront site. It's always better uh, for people that came here for the first time. Uh, but uh, you should know that if you get a taxi to get there, it won't cost more than four euros. So it's up to you. Um, I think that... Uh, uh, I have uh, told pretty much everything you need to know. If you have anything else that you would like to ask me about organization stuff, feel free.